Dear viewer, I come to you again and I invite you today, um, 35 of at the presentation in this channel. Welcome as we proceed to now look into the new theme, the theme of the three angels' message. We read today from the book of Revelation chapter 18 and verses 1 and 2. But before we can do that, I would want to request you, my dear view, so that you can join me in prayer. Shall we pray? Gracious, loving Father, every day that you wake us up, every night that your faithfulness remains, every hour, every time that you give us to come to you in prayer, Lord, you have urged us to pray without ceasing. And as we join hands with my dear viewer, Lord, I pray that you may bless him as you use me mightily to give voice to your word. Touch my lips and may this message go to bless those who are near and far. May your will be done. May your name be glorified. In Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, amen. Dear viewer, Revelation 18 is a text that we all know as Adventists. And even you as a Bible reader, you know this text and you ought to understand it. It says in verse 1 and verse 2 that after all this I saw another angel come down from heaven with great authority and the earth grew bright with his splendor. He gave a mighty shout. Babylon is fallen. That great city is fallen. She has become a home for demons. She is a hideout for every false spirit. A hideout for every false vulture and every false dreadful animal. The spirit through John, the revelator. This disciple who loved Jesus so much, as he was exiled to die in hard labor in Patmos, as he was alone, and as his mind turned to heaven, wondering when it would be at the end of him, when all the other disciples had died, he wondered what would come ahead of time. And just like Daniel was loved of the Lord, John, who loved his master, who leaned and placed his head upon his chest, even on that day when they were having Holy Communion, this John the Revelator, who is being loved by God, the Spirit took him and he saw in these last days, that there would be an angel. And an angel in the scripture refers to messenger. It doesn't necessarily mean an angel that is flying with wings. 
but it means a messenger and a message that is running, that is swift, that is flying through the air. It could be likened to now, where we have all this technology, where any news, anything that happens can go around the world within a matter of minutes. And so, the message in these last days, the powerful message of the angel who has authority and power, is said to fly, to go swiftly to every part of the world, and it will make the world brighter. That means people will understand the gospel and live according to the gospel. And therefore, their lives will shine and be illuminated. The bearers of the gospel and those who listen will be transformed. Their lives will be regenerated. And so this is where it says, at that time, this angel will declare that everything that is worldly and so Babylon, Babylon is fallen. The systems of this world, including churches that may not be keen in following the truth as it is revealed in Christ Jesus. And those who preach the gospel using even powers that could be demonic, says Babylon, Babylon is fallen. Friend, this text invites us and it is telling us this is another angel. As it is, we will look into Revelation 14, but here, this is a preview which we need to capture. It says this angel is going with authority and preaching the gospel. And thus I want to invite you to think about this authority and relate it with what Jesus said in Matthew 28 and verses 18. Listen to Jesus. He came to his disciples and he said, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Friend, I want you to know that here, when we talk about the power this authority, it is that Jesus is saying, I am giving you my very own godly divine power and authority which can cast and break every barrier, which can make people obedient to the gospel, which can heal every disease, be it spiritual or physical, the angel has a full of authority and the world is enlightened by this power. Friend, when we accept the gospel, when we accept Jesus Christ to rule over our life, we are not only accepting a message, but we are accepting his very presence and he gives us authority so that we can walk and bear and speak this message as a message that we have experienced and we know its power. And so, as we read, it is Paul who reminded the Ephesians that we wage war not with flesh, not with human power, 
We need God's authority. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need God's armor. And so he says, put on the armor of the Lord as you preach the gospel, so that as you go out, you may go in God's power and authority. The three angels' message and the fourth angel in Revelation 18 is telling us we who live in these last days must be those who go in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the power of God himself, in the authority that Christ was given. And so we should move and not fear, but do this knowing that it is the agenda of heaven at this time. Brother, won't you join us and join the whole church so that we pray. We pray for God to develop in you and me. At this end time, faith that works through love. We pray for spiritual fortitude th through a strong connection with Jesus to resist and endure the devil attack and temptation. Won't you join me to pray for the Holy Spirit to bless us today and bless the general conference session business meetings with the many decisions for the world church that we pray for the Holy Spirit to guide the election of leaders that will humbly honor his word and selfishly advance the mission of the church that we pray for the many um, who will visit the general conference that they stay safe and return safely join me in prayer my fellow viewer. Eternal Father, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, that when we are called into the ministry of the gospel, when we join in this work, we are not left alone. The authority which you gave to the disciples at first, you are giving it to the church in the last days. So that, Lord, in this season, in this period of the three angels' messengers, we can join and enlighten this world as believers. Father, we pray that you may fill us and give us a rich experience, a closer walk with you. That, O oh Lord, as the session and the councils are happening. Decisions are made. You may guide even in the election of the leaders so that leaders may be chosen who honor you and who will carry the work forward. Bless my dear viewer. And Lord, may you join us together so that we as a church from the general conference to every local church, to every believer, to the last man, may be united in this mission and that together we may shine because you have made us to be the light of the world. Thank you for hearing my prayers for my listener. You may meet him and her at their points of need. Remember us, Lord in your kingdom and may you fill us with your Holy Spirit and wake us up so that we can do what we need to do at this time. Thank you for hearing and answering us in your mercies and goodness because we have prayed in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen. Dear viewer, we are concluding. May God bless you even as you go about your duties, may God meet you at your points of need as you continue to shine for heaven. Look forward to seeing you again uh, in another program. God bless you.